Welcome back to our study on the first letter of Peter. And today's, I don't want to say a complex passage, but a controversial passage, because it deals with the roles and relationships of husband and wives. And we know that always produces a fair amount of discussion. The background, he's been talking about submitting to authorities, governing authorities, and then he goes on to talk about slaves submitting to masters as Christians, even though your master might be harsh or your governing authorities might be corrupt. We're told God has instituted these authorities. And he now goes on to the relation, firstly, of wives to husbands and then later on of husbands to wives. I read from verse 1 of chapter 3. Wives in the same way, so he's talking about what he's just been saying in terms of submission to authorities. In the same way, wives, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. So he's speaking to a Christian woman who's married to an unbeliever and saying, listen, submit to your husband and hopefully when he sees your attitude and your godliness and your purity, then he could be won over to Christ. So if you want your husband to come to Jesus, then submission is the command and a godly life that shines Christ might uh, be the attractant to or for him. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as braided hair and the wearing of gold, jewelry and fine clothes. Now with men that's a difficult challenge because we often respond to looks and figure and shape and uh, he's telling wives actually that's not what really counts. That's a superficial assessment of, of a, a woman. Her beauty should come from something inner. We should love our wives because of what's inside of them. Instead it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. So again, it's connected with submission, the gentle and quiet spirit that doesn't undermine your husband, that doesn't second guess him on all his decisions. Now, we've spoken about the relationships in marriage before, but again, let me emphasize that the command for a woman to be submissive to their husbands and their husbands to love their wives is not only because God has instituted it, but also because it's the need, the need of women to be loved because they're relational, the need of men to be affirmed and respected because they're less relational and more productivity orientated. So therefore, God has designed us like this. We're told it takes place even in the womb. But the point is, we know as we look around that women love relationships. They need love. Uh, men need respect and submission so they can lead. They carry a huge load on themselves of the responsibility of the family, not only materially, but also spiritually. And so God has made this design. We use the illustration, the a uh, captain of a team is appointed before the game, not during the game. And he might not be the cleverest, the fastest, the biggest, but he's chosen for his abilities to lead. And that's what God has designed man for, to lead in a marriage relationship. I'm not talking outside of a marriage relationship here. He says, now as an example, for this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands. He's using an example now. He says, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Now, if you try and tell your wife to call you master, that's not going to go down well. I've tried it, but it doesn't work. But he's just saying, there's an example. She was a godly woman. She honored her husband. Do not give way to fear. I think there's always great fear in a girl. If, I, if I'm vulnerable and submit to him, uh, is he going to hurt me? And uh, that's always the danger. It always carries risk. But unfortunately, we're not only told to submit to godly husbands. Uh, we hear it's, he's an unbeliever in the first example given. So we don't get to choose who leads. God has pre-appointed who will lead the family in the same way that he tells children to submit to their parents. No matter what your parent is like, you don't get to choose. And so in a sense, God has set up the structure that women are to submit to their husbands and allow them to lead. As I say, the danger of always challenging every decision he makes, you'll just undermine him and emasculate him. But I can't 
finish without dealing with the husbands. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. Now, obviously, in other parts of Scripture, when Paul speaks, he talks about loving your wives as Christ loved the church. And treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. He's just saying, look after your wives. They're lovely. We need them. We love them. They give us all the support we need. They're encouraging. They speak us up. Uh, they should be affirming us. They're your, your, your team. And, and therefore, you need to be considerate with them and not try and make them like you. They're not men, obviously, and uh, women want to talk and share their own experiences of the day. And we need to listen and hear and encourage and support them. So we told in Scripture to love our wives as Christ loved the church because that's what they need. They need love. I've mentioned before a, a statistical survey done in the States. They asked the question to men and women, would you prefer to be without love or respect in your marriage? And most, 70% of men said they could live without love, but they need respect. It was the converse with women. They could live without respect, but they need love. Now, we need both those things. But it just shows you the emphasis. Men love respect. Women need love. And that's what the command is. Now, some people have always said, no, this is contextual. It was a it was a patriarchal society. Well, it was in the Jewish culture, but not in the Greek culture. The Greco-Roman world, women were in a lot of prominence. Their, their gods were women, Diana and Artemis, and held a, were held in high esteem by the people. So I think it's difficult when one can say, listen, this is contextual, it's a patriarchal society, and therefore they would take a different stance. Well, this isn't Paul speaking, this is Peter, head of the early church. He's dealing not just with Jews, he's dealing across the, the globe, as it were, to the churches. And therefore this seems to be that God has set this up in marriage, and it's not going to change. This is God's design, and if we try and undermine it, we do it at our own cost. It's a bit like someone telling our children, you no longer have to honor your parents because times have changed. Not at all. So I think it's very difficult to say, to contextualize, as I say, it doesn't apply now. Women, submit to your husbands. God has appointed them to lead, allow them to lead, affirm them, talk them up. Husbands, love your wives. Be considered, be gentle with them. Cut them a lot of slack. Give them a lot of time. They need relationship from you. They need support and encouragement. Give them all of that and you'll have a happy wife and you'll have a happy husband. I hope that's been helpful. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your instruction here on our roles again. And it's hard. And we pray that we would be enabled to do them. Lord, give us as men strength to be able to love our wives as Christ loved the church. And for women to be able to submit and allow them with all the strength of character and vibrancy they have to, to be our partners as we work as a family team. We ask this in your precious name and for your glory. Amen. God bless you. See you early next week.